Okay, so... Shut up! What we're gonna be talking about is uh, the, F uh, the FTC role and the bat uh, slash battery commander. The reason I say slash battery commander is because um, in real life FTC would be uh, would be higher than a, a battery commander. It's a fire direction center and that's not one person, it's actually um, a, bo uh, a, a big ass radio station where requests for or calls for fire are handled. So all the FOs send their requests to an FTC and then the FTCs decide what uh, what to do with the requests and then send them to a ba uh, to a battery commander and tells them I want you to do this. Um, this also means that the FTC is um, are actually the guys in charge of what um, what fire should be uh, should be given in a request for fire. We tend to a duo treat uh, a call for fire from an FO like that's the only thing that matters, but in reality. The FTC decides what um, what matters and what doesn't matter, and he has his own orders. He bases uh, his decisions not on uh, a tactical situation on platoon level, but uh, but on the battalion or even uh, brigade level. That's why he uh, he p puts his focus. He doesn't really care about uh, that a platoon is pinned down and, the, uh, and needs assistance if that doesn't fit in with uh, with the big plan. If the big plan is to uh, uh, is uh, to achieve breakthrough in one uh, one place, they and they will focus their energy there and nowhere else. Uh, it also depends on the logistics situations. If we have uh, a bajillion rounds and we can easily get more rounds, then uh, then the FTC would pr pretty much respond to every call for fire. But if we only get, uh, but if we've gotten the ammo we we can for today, which is 50 HE, then we're only going to use the HE we need to use to complete our missions and nothing more. So an FO. That's the word for a front uh, for a forward observer. He's um, he can be uh, he can also be, have uh, different uh, s uh, sets of uh, qualifications. He could just be a regular inf uh, infantryman with a radio that happens to switch on to the fire support net and say, "I need fire support uh, right around there, and I'm I'm here." And uh, I, uh, shit, I don't know shoot uh, shoot the things. Or it could be a trained officer or trained. Uh, Sergeant who knows exactly what he needs to say in order to accomplish his objectives. Um, but what's important for you to know as an FTC it, it, is what kind of FOs have priority. Is, the, is it only the company level FOs, the platoon level F, uh, FOs, or any FO that, are, uh, that uh, joins on? You usually get some sort of priority. Like when we did the Hammondsburg event, then uh, Krauss was the FO, he had priority, then, uh, then I am. Um, I came in second for fire requests, and then uh, Falcon came in third, and then everyone else. So uh, pretty much, if anyone asked for fire, and me and Falcon or uh, Kraus came on the net and requested something else, then the FTC would drop what uh, he was just doing, and start responding to our request instead, because we were more important. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, F uh, FOs would. Uh, if they have training, they would usually request uh, something very specific. They would request uh, a fire force, either a grid, a shift, or a polar mission. You're going to learn what that is. They're going to request the amount of guns they need. They're going to request the amount of uh, rounds they need. And they're going to request what type of am ammunition they need and what type of fuse they need. If they uh, and um, we're going to go over how to do this more uh, simply. But pretty much, what the FTC would do is just say, uh, repeating what he, uh, what the FO says, and then based on what the FO asked for, he, and they'll make something that makes sense according to that. So if uh, yeah, we got, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Any questions on what an FTC uh, uh, or slash battery commander's job is? For now. What's it short for? FTC. It's for Fire Direction Center. Roger. And, and, and that's why I find it's usually a, a bit of a... We, we use that wrong here at your... We should just call it Battery Commander, because that's what, what they are usually. We don't have enough artillery to need an FTC in, uh, when we play missions. Yeah, it's kind All of right. a misnomer when they call it an FTC in, in our missions. Okay. So what we're going to go over next is the different kinds of ammo and the different kind of fuses for those uh, types of ammo and what they're used for 
and how they can be used. You might want to write some of this down. Uh, if you don't feel you can write it down, I'll uh, give you a link to a guide later where you can read, uh, read through this and re uh, to remember it. The first thing, our favorite round, we use that all the time. HE, also called high explosive. This is a versatile type of ammunition. It can be used to destroy almost any type of target we, uh, we face on a battlefield. Uh, it has... Uh, it also has a lot of different fuses, which makes it, which makes it uh, good to have around for di different t things. The most common used one is Fuse Quick, also known as Point Detonate. That is, uh, that of course means that the round ex uh, explodes when it hits, uh, hits the ground. It's good for fast missions and simple missions. It should be used against infantry and maybe light vehicles. What it does is when you hit the uh, when you make it explode on the ground, you get the uh, you get some damage to the ground and you get a frag a fragmentation effect that uh, that kills infantry and uh, and damages light vehicles to a level where they and what are use pretty much useless. Next type of use we have for HE is delay. Delay means that once you hit the ground, a grenade will will wait. Uh, will delay its detonation by 0 0.05 seconds. So it's very, very shortly, but it's just enough for it to, uh, to penetrate something like a building roof or a bunker, uh, bunker roof or something like that. Uh, this type of ammo is really good for destroying enemy for uh, fortifications or if enemies are inside houses. And if you have time for it and enough, enough ammo for it, you can even use it against heavy vehicles. If the enemy has parked a bunch of a uh, bunch of tanks or BRDMs uh, in the middle of the road, can you can do a HE delay fire mission on them, and you can pretty much destroy their vehicles if you hit them spot on. But it's hard to do, and it takes time, and the enemy would usually respond by moving. Next, uh, we have two other ty uh, types of fuses for uh, HE. They pretty much do the same if you use them uh, correctly. The ba uh, uh, we have uh, time fuses. When uh, when you do a fire mission in the battery computer, then you would get a uh, usually get a time of flight. That time of flight is used for uh, for the time fuse, uh, and it can be used. Uh, you usually use that for uh, for doing what's called airburst rounds. So you know how long the rounds gonna fly, and then you're gonna set the uh, the fu uh, the time on the fuse five uh, point five seconds sh shorter. So that means it explodes right uh, right above the ground, and that gives a larger fra frag effect. That's good for uh, again good for infantry in the open or infantry in foxholes because when the round explodes above the foxholes, you get frag into the hole. Proximity, um, also called VT, pretty much the sa and, and the same thing. It explodes. Uh, it has a. Uh, it has a sensor, so it explodes when it when it senses it's getting close to the ground. That's why uh, proximity rounds should only be used in what's called a high angle mission, where you aim the gun really high and make a uh, make a, st a steeper angle, so it gets uh, so you get it more uh, st you get a steeper angle on the ground. The, because if you do a low angle, then you might risk the, the round goes off because it gets too close to the ground. High angle think, means uh, lots of air time. Yeah. Yeah. The problem with that is, of course, you get the you and you risk that you delay the fire mission too much if you if uh, the round is sixty seconds to get to the target. And any questions on AG and the different fuses? And if uh, if something doesn't make sense, just go ahead and speak up. Because I'm just sitting here looking at my notes. Okay, next thing is white phosphorus. It's a pretty obvious uh, round. We're just gonna go over it pretty fast. White phosphorus is basically a grenade that uh, that uh, build phosphorus. The good thing about phosphorus is that once it once it gets in contact with air or with oxygen, it will burn. And it will burn until there's no more phosphorus. So um, once a white phosphorus round hits the ground, you get a big white cloud of smoke. That's awesome. Uh, it's really good to screen your movement, 
And if you don't care about the, the Geneva Convention and stuff like that, it's pretty good to kill people too, because it burns like a motherfucker. And the only way you can extinguish it in real life is pour water on it and scrape uh, and uh, scrape it off with with a bayonet. That's pretty much the only thing you can do about it. So you have to cut yourself just to get it off. It comes with uh, most of them comes with a point detonate fuse and a time fuse. So point detonate, you get a smaller area of effect, but you can do it, uh, but you can uh, do the fire mission more quickly. Uh, time fuse, you get a large area of, uh, then you get a large area of, of effect, but you're more vulnerable to, to wind in real life at least. But the round explodes overhead and the white phosphorus showers down on the ground. But if there's enough wind, the, the column of smoke will uh, dissipate quicker. Any questions on white phosphorus? No. Okay, next round is DPICM. Object, do you remember what the, what it stood for? Dual purpose. Dual thing. purpose improved conventional munition. Yay. Hmm. Basically, what the DPICM is, it's a ti uh, time fused weapon, like uh, like uh, HE and uh, white phosphorus can be. And what it does is that when uh, when it is, is above the target area and you and have reached this end time, it blows up and expands a bunch of sub munitions. Uh, and once these uh, submunitions hit the ground, they explode on impact. So they basically work like small uh, cluster bomb units. It uh, has an extremely good effect against infantry and foxholes. Again, because the submunitions come down from above. DPICM is uh, very much used here, uh, here at UO because of the large area of effect and because of it's like instant insta kill. You can insta kill a squad with one round of DPICM on target. In real life, the problem with DPICM is that all, uh, not necessarily all of these uh, subunits explode. So you you can end up creating a minefield for yourself if you're not careful. Or just uh, the guys uh, from the that ground may pick the the shells up and create IDs from it as well. That's a known problem of it. Yeah, exactly. But then. Uh, of course, that's not a concern, you know, but it's uh, that's why you would limit your use of that in real life. You re only use that as a panic option. We also have illumination rounds. These are also white phosphorus rounds. They are just uh, made differently so that when uh, when they blow, only pu uh, only the outside of them burn, so they don't uh, so all the phosphorus don't burn at once. That makes for a, uh, a longer lasting flame instead of uh, a big a big uh, puff of smoke. The, what happens is when it blows, uh, parachute inflates and the uh, phosphorus hangs in a, uh, below that parachute, fly, uh, uh, going lower to the ground while while it burns a, a big white light. Uh, in real life, infrared uh, infrared uh, illuminants also exist, which are a f really a force multiplier if you have uh, night vision and the enemy doesn't. Are there any questions on the rounds uh, mentioned now? Okay. Next, uh, next things are more if, if fancy stuff. We have the fast cam family. The fast cam family is a family of uh, scatterable mines. So there's uh, mine laying muni munitions. They're time fuse operated, and they work pretty much like the DPICM. Only difference is the sub munitions do not blow on impact. They land uh, on the ground, and then after a while, they uh, they arm themselves. So that means you can uh, you can use those to deny ground to the enemy. We did that on the Hermannsberg uh, event as well, where we put out uh, a bunch of these to uh, inf prevent the enemy from uh, getting armored reinforcements into the area. We have two different uh, types of uh, fast cam ammo. We have something called RAMS, remote anti-armor mine system. They're powerful not to defred de a tank and maybe even kill the driver. And um, then we have something called Atoms, which are aerial denial artillery munitions. And those are pretty much just your basic anti personnel mine. It's pretty much DPICM rounds that that just uh, explodes when you step on them instead. If you want to be a real asshole, you can uh, put out the... Uh, 
was uh, the Rams rounds in the, in an area, and then afterwards bombard that area with the Adams rounds. So you create a part the anti tank uh, minefield and a part anti personnel minefield. Last uh, type of uh, grenade we're gonna go over here. That is uh, used commonly is the sad arm search and uh, sense and destroy armor. Uh, this is what's called smart submunition. So uh, what happens again is the grenade uh, explodes above uh, the ground on the time fuse, and then uh, two little sh uh, shells act. Um, get, uh, well, I'm just, uh, getting better at English. Go easy, dude. Again. Go easy, dude. Yeah. I'm just uh, taking a break here. Okay, so these two submunitions exp uh, expand for the round and they deploy themselves in a parachute. These two submunitions will then, using magnetic sensors most li uh, likely, will sense if there is any ar uh, armored vehicles in the area, a heavy presence of metal. And then uh, once they uh, sense that, they will. And they will deploy some fins and activate a little rocket that will propel them into the target, and then they basically work as a as a heat round when they hit the ta uh, hit the tank or the car or whatever they find. The those mean bugs apparently they don't work as they're supposed to for, uh, right now, but uh, I think someone's trying to fix that. The main problem about sad arm rounds is that. From the time uh, the round exp explodes at the first time, it takes about 15 seconds for the uh, submunitions to sense where they are and sense where the enemy targets are and engage. So you should most likely use those against static targets. If you use that against the uh, moving targets, then you should have to very accurately predict where they're going to be in the time of flight, which could be 60 seconds, and then an additional 15 seconds. Okay, so that's uh, all the munitions we ran over them pretty f quickly, and they will. And I'll just toss you that guide later where you can read it. Are there any uh, questions or comments for now? No, yeah. all good. Okay. Next phase is gonna be uh, briefly going over the FTC computer, how it works. I'm gonna. We're going to spawn some uh, FTC Humvees and I'm going to talk you through what you need to put in in the different boxes in order to operate this effectively. If, uh, if you can, once you get good at uh, operating these uh, FTC computers, you can actually very quickly get a fire mission ready if you get the information you need. The FTC uh, computers, we have two of them. We have one in the uh, Paladins, you see parked on the airfield. They have their own FTC computer, each vehicle. So, uh, so basically, what they and they pretty much just need a grid and a target elevation, and they can, they can fire. You can also do what's called a shift mission and a polar mission with those. But I'll get into that later because it's a bit more complicated to do on those than on the uh, than in the Humvee we have here. So you yeah, actually, so, uh, no, Uptrack is already gone ahead. Sweet. So follow me.